Welcome back. Today's video is going to be about the most hyped up eyeshadow palettes ever, particularly on social media. I thought this would just be a fun video to kind of discuss these palettes because some of these are older palettes and when these were coming out, I mean, people were raving about these palettes. A lot of them were sold out for a long time. And I will say a lot of these did stand the test of time. People were talking about them for more than, you know, just a week. Some of these palettes I have owned, some of them I have never owned. I will say I do think some of these are overhyped from my experience, but some of them are really great. So I really wanna hear what you guys think. I'm sure there's others that were really hyped up too that I have forgotten about and not included in this video. And if you've owned any of these palettes or if you still own them, please let us know. I thought this would just be fun to kind of discuss these palettes and let's get into it. I'm going to start with probably one of the most hyped up eyeshadow palettes ever, and that is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. Oh my gosh, when this palette came out, the website was crashing because people try were trying to order it in the middle of the night, and it sold out multiple other times after restocks. Yes, this one was really, really hyped up. I think eventually they did make it permanent, which I'm actually okay with that if the demand was really that high. I know sometimes people get upset when brands make something permanent that they say is limited edition. Whether that was their plan all along, I guess we'll never know, but yes, this one was so, so hyped up. And yes, it went out of stock quite a bit. And they did hype this up as limited edition, I'm pretty sure. But yes, they eventually brought it back. Now, I tried to buy it when it first came out, when the website was crashing in the middle of the night. Kind of ridiculous that I lost sleep over it and I ended up not being able to get it that night. I did buy it later when it was much more readily available. And sadly, I actually forgot that I even owned this palette because I did declutter it at some point. I forgot that I even owned this palette and honestly, I think this one was overhyped. Having owned it, I thought it was good. It was not amazing. I will say Too Faced, really their eyeshadow formula is not my favorite anymore. Although I do still have the original Chocolate Bar palette. Personally, I think the original Chocolate Bar is better than the Sweet Peach. I really do love the warm tones though, but I really think the biggest appeal of this palette was the adorable peach packaging and maybe the scent. Also, this was at a time where warm neutrals were all the rage. People really wanted those orangey browns and peachy colors. So I think they released it at the right time. Clearly the palette did well because it sold out a multitude of times. I'm pretty sure it's still available, but yes, this is one I had it and I eventually decluttered it. Next up is one that I really wanted to buy, but I was never able to purchase it. And that is the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca palette. This was all the rage. Oh my gosh, this was another one that sold out. And I think people were reselling this for crazy high prices on eBay and other resale sites. And okay, so I never owned it, but I really did want it. Kind of silly though, because at the time this palette came out, I rarely wore colorful eyeshadow. Now, this was at the peak of the Kat Von D brand. I mean, this is when people were loving the brand. Anything they released, everybody was all over it. It was a hyped up brand to begin with. Talk about a brand that has really like gone downhill since then, which is partly due to the controversies of Kat Von D and she's no longer affiliated with the brand, but their products just don't get as much hype kind of even before that happened. I, I just don't think their releases were as interesting, but this one was all the rage. And this was also the time where neutral shadows were very, very popular. And I think because this was different, because this was so colorful, people were excited to see something different. Honestly, this is one that I think if this palette came out now, people would be like, okay, it's a rainbow palette, who cares? Because there are so many rainbow palettes out now um, but I think at that time there were not as many. I think there were more in the indie market. I don't think we saw as many colorful eyeshadows kind of in the mainstream stores, I don't think anyway. And you know, wearing colorful eyeshadow, I don't think was as trendy at that time than it is in the last couple of years, at least on YouTube anyway. So, you know, I think they were doing something different, but I really think if this palette came out now, I don't think people would be as excited about it. Also, the packaging was huge and kind of strange because it had to slide out of the box and it was a separate palette and then the cover was like this separate box cover. 
I mean, honestly, I'm really glad that I never bought this because I really don't like having to store very, very large palettes. I've mentioned that before. You know, space is at a premium in my vanity right now, so I don't know how I would have even had room for this palette. But I really think that this is one that if it came out now, I really don't think anybody would care all that much. Next up, the Urban Decay Original Naked Palette. Oh my gosh, this one, very, very hyped up. Personally, I think this was worth the hype. I bought this very close to the time that it came out. And this was at a time where I had a pretty small makeup collection, way smaller than I have now. And this was one of my most prized possessions. This palette was so special to me. It was so beautiful. I loved the colors. Neutral to warm tones were definitely my thing at that time. I mean, they still are. Funny enough though, I think looking at this palette now, at that time we thought it was more warm toned, but later even warmer toned palettes came out. It's actually pretty neutral if you think about it, but anyway, I wore this palette so much and I did kind of try to savor it over the years. I would kind of try to only wear it more on special occasions and I would try to, you know, wear more my drugstore eyeshadows during the week. Kind of silly, honestly, because it takes so long to hit pan on Urban Decay shadows. And eyeshadow, I mean, eventually does go bad. I kept this palette for a very, very long time. And when I first started project panning, I did finally hit pan on my four favorite shades. Sin and Half Baked were my absolute favorites in that palette. Honestly, this is one where I kind of regret not buying it before it was discontinued again because by the time it was discontinued, I had already decluttered my older one and it was very old at that time. I mean, like I said, I bought this palette when it first came out. So at this point, I mean, if I still had it, I don't even think I would use it. it the shadows were definitely not as good at the time I decluttered it as when I bought it. They were kind of starting to disintegrate a little bit. They were not performing as well. So I actually kind of regret not buying this palette before it was discontinued. I don't need it. I know that I don't and I have similar shades, but there's just a lot of nostalgia for me with the original Naked palettes. So I personally really think this one was worth the hype. Let's talk about another peak Kat Von D palette, the Shade Light Eye Palette. She also had the Shade Light Contour Palette. I did own the eyeshadow palette. I never owned the contour palette. This palette is still around. Again, this was at the peak of the Kat Von D brand. People were loving the brand all around. And I actually, I did like this palette. I did eventually declutter it. I'm not sure it was as good as, you know, it was hyped up to be. I mean, they were good matte eyeshadows. They were pretty powdery. They were easy to blend. It was a cool concept where I don't think we had seen it a lot at that time where it was an all matte palette and it was separated with cool, warm, and neutral, very basic colors, you know, just browns, grays, cream, a black eyeshadow. Very, very simple palette. Um, I think this is good. Honestly, I kind of regret decluttering it, to be honest, uh, because it's just very basic. Colors that I would use all the time. Formula-wise, I don't think it was amazing, but I actually think concept-wise, this one was worth the hype. And yeah, I mean, this one is still around, I think. I mean, I could get it. And now that Kat Von D is not associated with the brand, I mean, I would buy from the brand again. I just haven't really felt the urge. This is probably the only thing from the brand I'd even consider buying because yeah, I kind of regret getting rid of this one. Let's talk about another brand that really has fallen off the map. And I've actually done a video called Brands That Fell Off The Map quite a while ago. And I talked about this brand, Lorac. They were so, so hyped up and so, so popular. And now not so much. Um, I think this brand, obviously I, I think they're still getting customers because they have not gone out of business. They're in Ulta and I do think it's a brand that people kind of go into Ulta and buy it. Um, but I just don't hear about Lorac on YouTube anymore. The original Pro One, this was very, very hyped up. I think this was really nice how they had the mattes and then the shimmers down at the bottom. I actually really like this palette and I do still own it. I actually repurchased this one because this was one of my favorite all-time palettes for very many years. This was also at the time where I didn't have as many eyeshadows as I do now, and I use this palette a lot. I had hit pan and used up probably about half the palette, 
and eventually decluttered it. And then I repurchased it a couple years ago when it was 50% off at Ulta. And I'm really glad that I repurchased it now. Is the Lorac formula as amazing as some eyeshadow palettes that we have now? Not so much, but it is a good formula. The mattes are really powdery, but they're very pigmented and they're easy to blend. The shimmers are, they're true shimmers. They're not this like foiled metallic look that we often see now with brands like Juvia's Place and in other indie brands where the metallics are crazy, crazy foiled. Lorac is not that, but I actually like that. It's a bit better for every day. They're beautiful, they're really smooth. So I'm really happy that I repurchased this palette. I still like it. I mean, yeah, nobody really talks about Lorac anymore, but I think this is a good one. And then of course the Lorac Mega Pro 1 and Mega Pro 2. These were really, really hyped. And then I think after that, that's when Lorac kind of lost their hype. I mean, they also had those unzipped palettes. Those were quite talked about as well, but then after that, not so much. But the Mega Pros, particularly the one and the two, were so hard to get your hands on. They eventually did bring them back, but not for years later, which is kind of strange that it took them so long to bring them back, honestly, considering how hyped up they were. They were sold out immediately. I mean, everybody really did want these palettes. Same formula as the other Pro palettes. And I did actually own these and I did declutter these eventually. Kind of sad, but they were pretty big. I don't know. I think the format of the first kind of pro palettes where it was two rows, mattes, shimmers, I think that was a much better setup. You know, they got into the larger size palettes, which I don't really prefer. So yeah, I don't really regret getting rid of the Mega Pros. Next up is a palette I did not own, but I've seen so many videos about it. I mean, this one was talked about so much. That is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. And this was also kind of around that hype of like the warm tone shades. This palette is very warm toned with a few pops of color. This was a polarizing one because it was really, really hyped up and talked about a lot and people really, really wanted it. But some people really didn't like the formula of this palette. A lot of people said that some of the shimmer shades were difficult to work with and crumbly and all of that. She later did reformulate this palette um, and it supposedly was better than, I don't know, I've never really been all that interested in this one and I do own one palette from Huda. It's one of the semi newer ones, one of the mini, the nude ones. Hmm. It's a good formula, but I don't think it's amazing. I would not categorize it as one of my favorite formulas, so I'm just not all that intrigued to buy more palettes. But a lot of you guys have told me that her larger palettes are a better formula than the small ones, so I don't really know. I guess I can't say too much about this one because I never owned it, but I know that a lot of people bought this one and the formula was pretty polarizing. Hey, I cannot talk about hyped up palettes without talking about the Morphe 35-0. Wow, okay, the influencers, they were pushing the Morphe codes, they were pushing the Morphe palettes, they were saying these are so good, so good, so amazing, the most amazing formula ever. Um, I did eventually buy this one, but definitely not at the time of the hype. I bought it later, I think when it was available at Ulta, and this is one that I eventually decluttered, mostly because the packaging, again, hard to store, so many repetitive shades in this palette, but again, they really jumped on the bandwagon of when the warm tones were popular, acted immediately, created this palette, and obviously it did well because it sold out many, many times. But yeah, I mean, looking at it now, it's so many repetitive brown shades in there. It's ridiculous. I mean, all of the Morphe 35 pan palettes have repetitive colors. Even that Jaclyn Hill palette, it does have repetitive colors. I do still have that one. And over the years, I did own a few other Morphe palettes as well that I did declutter, but also that cheapy black packaging, not great. I don't know. I mean, what more can you really say about this palette? This one, I mean, I think most people would agree this was really overhyped. And I think we know now that most of the influencers pushing the Morphe products were doing it because of the fantastic commissions that they were receiving. Um, I mean, I don't think the formula was bad by any means. I did like the Morphe formula, 
but I mean, so many people were saying that it was just as good as Makeup Geek or even better, and it really wasn't. I mean, I don't think that that formula was as good as some other eyeshadows, although they did improve their formula over time for the most part. I mean, the Jaclyn Hill palette I think was better, but then of course then they had the Vault palettes and you know, whatever. I think we know the whole story with Morphe and I think most people would agree this was definitely overhyped. All right, this one was super, super hyped. Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. Personally, I actually do think that this one deserves the hype. I did own this palette, but I eventually decluttered it because I did discover that a couple of the shades in there did irritate my eyes, which is so strange because very few eyeshadows have ever irritated my eyes. I don't really have that sensitive of skin, um, but also the subculture that did irritate my eyes as well, and I did end up returning that. Um, yeah, Modern Renaissance, I think when it was released, I think it was a bit more revolutionary. I mean, now we've seen so many like red tones, warm tones, pink tones. I mean, it's kind of all been done at this point, but I, I think this was worth it for sure at the time that it came out. I know a lot of people still love this palette and I did really love it. Um, I just, for, for me, the Anastasia formula is not my favorite anymore. I feel like the mattes are a little too powdery. Sometimes they don't blend as well. The shimmers vary so much. Some are crumbly, some are more smooth. I just find that there's so much variability within the Anastasia formula that it's really not my favorite anymore. But I think the hype that Modern Renaissance got was definitely worth it. I know a lot of people still love that palette. I like that kind of soft, like velvety packaging too. I personally think that's really pretty. I know a lot of people don't like it though because it does get dirty pretty easily. Yeah, so I do think that this one was worth it. And this one was one, I mean, a lot of these other brands later kind of created dupes or their own version, not necessarily a dupe. This was definitely one that we saw recreated a multitude of times after it came out and honestly even to this day so personally i think modern renaissance is worth the hype Alrighty, and last up the original tartlet palette and the tartlet in bloom these came out also when tarte was in general a more popular brand and people seem to be loving their products more than they are now i mean i just don't really hear tarte talked about all that much just in general but at that time, these palettes were really, really popular and I owned the Tartlet in Bloom. And if you've been watching my channel from the beginning, it was my Pan That palette that I did that year, well, the first year I'd had my channel. And I hit pan on most of the shades. I used that palette so much. I still liked it after a year of using it almost every day, but I just kind of got sick of it eventually. Um, but I actually, I liked it. I thought it was a good palette. I didn't have the original Tartlet one but if that one was all matte. You know, they're very neutral, simple palettes. Um, I actually bought the Tarlet in Bloom as a gift for my friend several years ago, and she seemed to really, really like it. I think it's a good everyday palette for a lot of people, but I think now the market is so saturated with palettes that are neutral kind of everyday palettes that, you know, the competition is pretty up there. Yeah, I liked the Tartlet in Bloom. Was it the best palette I've ever owned? No, but I did enjoy it. And, you know, then they had the Tarte Toasted, which that one I actually still have. But by that time that came out, I just don't think Tarte was as popular. And some people really didn't like the formula on the Tarte Toasted. There seemed to maybe have be some variability. Personally, the one I have seems to be the same formula as the Tarlet in Bloom was. But yeah, I mean, I think Shortly after this, Tarte kind of fell off the map, and I think they were pretty late to releasing the Tarte Toasted because they released that kind of towards the end of the warm tone hype. So I think if they had released that sooner, people probably would have been more excited about it in general. But like I said, I have that one. I like it. I think the formula of these palettes was good, not amazing. But Tarte also does all these like limited edition holiday palettes where most of the time the formula is not as good and yeah, I, they're kind of known for that, unfortunately, but yeah, good. Not sure that these were worth the hype, but I did really like the Tartlet in Bloom. That is it for this video. I'm sure there are lots of other palettes that were super, super hyped or some that are today, but a lot of these were kind of older palettes where at that time, 
Palettes weren't really being released at the same speed that they are now. I mean, now there's just new palettes coming out all the time and there's new makeup brands coming out all the time. And I think, you know, four or five years ago, we weren't seeing as many new palette releases. And so I think it was also a bit more exciting when you saw a new palette, but now brands just kind of release them all the time. So I think that's also part of the reason that there isn't quite as much long lasting excitement about eyeshadow palettes as there once was. So yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know if there are other palettes that there was a lot of excitement over and whether you think they were worth it or not. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.